everyone, it's Lindsay from My Crafty Plants. Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, welcome. The new Erin Codron Life Planners and the new designs are launching in just a few days, and I'm super, super excited because I have a sneak peek at some of the items from the new lines, and I cannot wait to share them with you. If you are new to my channel, I just want to say an extra hello. I film all kinds of planner content, including a ton of Plan With Me videos, so if that is your thing, definitely check out some of my playlists. And I am also a member of the Erin Codron affiliate team, which enabled me to get a sneak peek at some of the new goodies coming along. All of these items were gifted to me, so thank you so much to Erin Codron for making this video possible and giving me all of these absolutely gorgeous planner goodies. But as always, even when I'm gifted something, all opinions are my own. All of these items will launch on April 24th for EC Insiders. That's their rewards program and it's 100% free to join. It gives you early access, special freebies, it lets you accrue points, and also sometimes you get special insider only sales. So I definitely recommend joining Erin Codron Insiders. If you are shopping the launch and you wanna use my affiliate link, I will leave that down in the description below. It does not cost you anything and I do so appreciate it. It helps support this channel. So without further ado, let's jump into all of this stuff. I will leave timestamps in the description below as well. I'm gonna start with the planners that I have, which is a vertical in the new Inspire design, as well as the Daily Duo in the Wildflower design. Design. We'll go through both of those and then I will go over all of these absolutely gorgeous accessories that I have, most of which I believe are from the Inspire line as well. If you are shopping on launch day, there's also two gifts with purchase, one for insiders and one for everyone. But like I said, it's free to join insiders. I don't have those, but I will try and pop a picture up on the screen just so that you can see them. So let's jump into the planners. If you are new to Erin Codron or need a little bit of a refresh on how the planner ordering works, Erin Codron has two life planner sizes, the classic seven by nine, which is this one here, and then the A5 size, which is just a little bit smaller. Not all of the interior designs are available in both sizes, however. In terms of the interior layout, they offer a number of different options. One is the classic vertical weekly. That is their most popular layout, and that is what I have right here. We will take a look at that. Then they also have a weekly horizontal layout. I don't have one from this launch, but I do have one from last year. This is in the In Bloom design, and this one is actually an A5 softbound, so it's slightly different, but that just gives you an overall view of what the horizontal layout looks like. They also have an hourly layout. Again, I don't have one from this year, but this is what it looked like last year. Hourly did get a little bit of a facelift this year. I will again try and pop a picture in of that. It looks so good. I definitely can't wait to try that one out. I will probably wait until the regular calendar year, the January to December planners come out to pick up one of those though, because I do have this calendar year one from last year. Then they also have a daily planner layout, which is called the Daily Duo. I have it right here in the A5 size. I also have this, this I use this every, almost every single day. This is one of my main planners. Uh, this is the new one, but we will take a closer look at that. And this is a, day, a daily planner layout. And that layout is available in the A5 size as well as the seven by nine. And then exclusively in the A5 size, they, they have another layout called the Compact Vertical. Again, I will try and pop a picture up. I do not have one of those. So in the seven by nine, nine size, you can get any of the three main weekly layouts plus the daily duo. And in the A5 size, you can get the daily size and then what they call their compact vertical. Seven by nine size planners start at $65.50 for the weekly option and $85.50 for the daily option because you get two planners with the daily duo instead of one. It's six months per planner. That way it fits inside the coil. For the A5 size, they start for the A5 size planner. It starts at $62.50 for the weekly planner and $76.50 for the Daily Duo. Again, you do get the full year's worth two daily planners. With this launch, there are three different interior colorways available. I do have two of them here. The first of which is Inspire, that is this one. The next of which is Wildflower, which is this one. And then there's a third one that's called Canvas, which is an absolutely gorgeous, true neutral. So if you like a plain planner spread so that you can sticker it up, so that you can choose your colors, it has no colors, no like little detailing on the pages. It's just a really true neutral neutral and then also the tabs are gray in that. So it's a really great option. I know people are super, super excited about it. Personally, I do like a little bit of color in my planner. So I am really glad to have both of these. That one, like I said, is called Canvas and you can check that out on the website or there will be other affiliates who have that one in their box. But my box did come with the Inspire and the Wildflower designs. We were given a couple
couple of different options to choose from, and this is the one that I picked. Uh, I love Etta V, which is the collab designer on this, which I will talk more about in a second, but also the florals definitely have my heart. I use an in bloom daily duo for this year as my main everyday planner and this planner right here will actually be my eight my main everyday planner starting in july so that heavily influenced my decision i really wanted the wildflower daily duo i'm gonna just push that off to the side and we can dive in to the first planner so this is the 18 month version uh this is also just available in a year-long version which runs from july start to june end and then towards the end of this year generally speaking in like october October or so, a calendar year one that runs January to December with these same designs will come out. The reason that I mention that is because there are some things with the 18 month planner I eat that is extremely, extremely thick. Right now I still have the stuff that this came with, like the um, perpetual calendar and the stickers and the folder and everything is still tucked in here. And you can kind of see how thick this is. My back cover was actually, is actually already starting to pop off for how thick this planner is. So I have to say that if you are a person Person that uses a lot of stickers that really likes to get creative in your planners like I am I would highly recommend just getting the year-long version up to you academic or calendar year that's really just a personal preference but the 18 month one is just so so thick and I just feel like the calendar or the academic year one just gives you more space to grow into that coil especially if you're using a lot of stickers speaking of coil let's talk about this new gorgeous coil so for right now this is only available in 7 by 9 and is not available in the A5 size. This is an upcharge. All of the planners come standard with a silver coil, but for $10, you can upgrade to gold, rose gold. And now in the seven by nine size, you can also upgrade to this absolutely amazingly gorgeous ombre rainbow coil. I am so obsessed with this. It's like pink, purple and teal. It's just really, really fun. Such a cool bit of detailing. I absolutely love that. And then this has the Etta V cover that is foiled on it. So a foiled cover, generally speaking, is also a little bit of an upcharge, but they do have this design available in a plain non-foiled version. Honestly, I don't love the way the rose gold looks with the rainbow coil. Uh, it's a really pretty cover, but I kind of wish that it was either like foiled in purple or something or pink or that it was or even silver I think would look a little bit better or that I had the rose gold coil matching with the rose gold cover. I'm a person that likes my foil matching though so that's just a personal preference. You can also customize these covers. This one says let your light shine uh, but you can get that to say your name or anything like that as well. So they do customize your cover and the customization is available on I think both the foiled covers and the plain covers as well. All of the planners also come with a ruler which you can clip on or clip off and this one has just the little classic Erin Codron asterisk on it and it is so they are sized now so that it's the same ruler on the A5 size or on the 7x9 size. So on the A5 size, it just runs almost the whole length of the planner. And on the 7x9 size, it is just like a little bit shorter. When you open it up, you get your the inside of the cover, which by the way, these covers are interchangeable. So you can pull, you can pop them off and pop them back on. You can change out designs. They offer tons of different, uh, different covers and you can change them out throughout the year. They have lots of seasonal ones and different fun stuff. On the inside, of the covers you have this little productivity dashboard this is like dry erase wet erase I never use it but I know a lot of people do so you can write on this and wipe it off etc then on the inside we've got a vellum this vellum is going to be different depending on what design you have so this vellum matches the Etta V pattern if you don't know Etta V is an artistic brand the artist's name is Jessica Rowlett I believe and and she has done a whole collaboration with Erin Cardron starting last year I am obsessed with this collaboration so much so that we actually ended up buying an art print from Etta V for our home not from Erin Codron we picked it up at Target actually uh so her stuff is amazing it's just these really bright gorgeous vibrant colors so I have a lot of stuff from the Etta V line already including one of the soft bound planners that was available last year this was just available in soft bound not in the coiled planners but I thought I would keep that handy in case we want to compare any of the colors or the order of the colors anything like that so anyway that is the design this design is woven throughout the planner and again this line is called inspire but if you hear anyone just saying the Etta V planner or the Etta V colorway, this is what they are talking about. 
So you have your cover page. Paper has not cha changed from last year. The Erin Codron paper is amazing. It's 120 GSM and it has a real tooth to it. It's beautiful to write on. Probably my favorite planner paper of any brand. Love the way that this writes and I love the texture on the Erin Codron paper. I'll show you a pen test later, but like I said, this paper has not changed since last year. And these planners are actually made in the USA, including the paper. So just like, come on, look at this. Just look at this. How gorgeous is this? I, when I tell you that I love Etta V, I just, yeah, there's, this is so stunning. Uh, so it says a beautiful day begins with a positive mindset. And this is the front tab cover. The tabs are a, the tabs are printed on just a slightly thicker paper than the regular paper. And the, the piece of the tab is laminated. So like I said, this is an 18 month planner. So it says 23, 24. Actually, if you buy the academic year one, it's going to say the same thing. But when you buy this in, if you buy this for a January start, it'll just say 2024. And then we have our year at a glance here with our July start for July, 2023 and ends in December, 2024. This is actually just a really nice, plain, clean page. There's no design on it this year. Here. And then uh, after that, we get our little, I think this is like technically a goals page. That's never what I use it for. What I like to do in these pages is I have this master calendar system where we write down like all of the appointments that are coming up, all of this house maintenance, regular things like that. And I actually use these because you get 12 boxes, one for each month. And I, I find that that's a really useful thing to keep in there as well. Again, you've got that design right there up at the top. Then you get a lined piece of notes page, and this is gonna be true before every month. And then you get into July, where color is this really beautiful indigo color, and each of the months are gonna have a little quote on them, but there aren't quotes like throughout the planner or on any of the planning pages, just on the tab there. So here is what the monthly design looks like. And it's just this really gorgeous blue color. It is full bleed, meaning the design runs all the way to the top of the page. That is a consideration if you are someone who stickers on your spreads or stickers on your monthly spreads, it does mean that it's super hard to cover up with whiteout. So if you want to work with the design, that works really well. But if you want to cover it completely, you are probably better off with the canvas design. So that is just a choice that you have to make between the fully blank canvas design where you're not going to get any of the color and having to kind of cover up to here. I always find when there's color on the page in this way, it's easier to work with the color than work against it. Uh, but yeah, and that being said, it is a really beautiful colorway. So that is the July page. Then you get another notes page and your dashboard page here. So this is in every one of the planners. We'll see it's in the A5 as well. It's just a little monthly dashboard. I sometimes use these and sometimes don't, but I just thought I would show you an example of one that I did use uh, back in September. Now I have like this really big monthly planner, which is actually the Erin Codron Family Organizer. And since I started using that, I haven't been using the dashboard pages, but before that I was using it. So I just would say uh, you have like four little sections here. I put a tracker at the bottom here, like a little habit tracker or a little uh, social media tracker at the bottom. I use this for like a top four priorities of the month. This one, I ended up doing a list of important days and then this I would flex every month just depending on a specific goal or a project I was working on or something that I had coming up over the course of the month. So there's lots of people who have setups for these dashboard pages that you can check out. If you scroll social media, you can get lots and lots of ideas. Um, I think it is really fun. I'm a big monthly planner person, so I just felt like I wanted more dashboard space. So that's why I ended up in the family organizer for that. But uh, it's really it's a really fun way to get started with monthly dashboard planning. Then here we have our first week. So this is the first week where July starts. You get a little bit of June into July. So each month will have a different color. Again, July is that indigo. And when you are in that month, you're in that color. So on the, what I like to call the split week, you start with one color and you end with another color. I always find it very hard to plan on these weeks. I mean, these colors go together, but you do have to work in both colors unless you're covering it. That being said, there's no design at the top of the page, so you do really have a little bit of flexibility. All the color on the page is one, the name of the month, the headers here, which are in uh, like an ombre, so starting with the darkest at the top, the medium and light, and then the lightest down here, there is actually a little bit of color on this little bottom section. So that is the classic vertical layout. I'm just gonna flip into the middle of the planner. I will flip through so you can see all the colors and all of the designs, but I just want it to kind of lay flattish for a second. 
So let's actually go even a little bit more in the middle. Okay, so here is March. We have this nice light green color here. So uh, the, vertical, the vertical planner from kind of left to right, you've got the name of the month and then a calendar up at the top for the month. Then you have a lined sidebar section and then each day has three main sections and then a little section at the bottom. I always think of this as the bottom washi section because when I started, that was the main way of stickering. That was you stuck a really big piece of washi from a stickering kit over that. Uh, if you were if you were doing full no white space sticker spreads, which is definitely a thing that I used to do, not anymore. Anyway, so you do have like a little header space in at the top of each section, and you can kind of go through. When I use a vertical layout in this format, I tend to put our dinner for the night down there. But you could do a workout, you could do a top priority for the day, a gratitude, pretty much anything. Uh, there's so many ways to use this. It's very flexible. The original, I believe the original intention when the plant, when this kind of layout was started was morning, afternoon, evening. So it was meant to be mirroring an hourly layout, but not as prescriptive as this at this time. I know a lot of people do it as maybe like events, to do's, and then something else. Uh, there's tons of different ways to use this, or you could break it up into like work, personal, kids, or, or to specific family members. There's lots of different ways to use it. It's a really flexible layout. It's also a really great stickering layout, particularly if you end up getting the canvas. A lot of people who do the really beautiful stickering memory planning spreads use this vertical kind of layout and use the whole full boxes and put a lot of stickers and deco in there as well. So that is what the layout the way out looks like it is Monday start and ends on Sunday. You get a little bit of the holiday printed up top here, but there's no design on the weekly spread, just on the monthly pages, which means that even if you want to sticker in here, it's going to be a little bit easier. You do have the shaded section at the bottom. So again, it's a little bit easier if you work with the color than against it, but you, you can totally cover it up, especially if you're using bottom washi. All right, so let's take a look at all of these colors. Editing Lindsay here. I am just popping back in with a little bit more information on the colorway that I learned after I finished filming. So I did want to just share that the Inspire colorway, the order and the actual colors match with the previous colorful Erin Cadron planner. So from last year, the Harmony colorful planners, which I don't actually have a Harmony colorful planner. So it's the same color order and the same color. So your July will match with your July, uh, August, etc. And that also means the month monthly sticker book, which has the color stickers for each month, also matches perfectly with this planner. I just thought that was really good information to have. So if you already have Harmony Colorful markers or other Harmony Colorful accessories, they are also going to match with this colorway. Also, if you pick up the Inspire Daily Duo, the tabs will match. So you do get all 12 colors in the Daily Duo. You'll have six in the first book and six in the second book, unlike the Wildflower colorway, which only has six colors that then repeat throughout the year. So just a little bit more information on the colorways for you. So after July, we get into August and oh my goodness, is that gorgeous. I am such a yellow person. I absolutely love of yellow. So yeah, that's definitely for me. That's so pretty. I would take that as a print in my office. So I have to see they I do think that they sell like some maybe not prints, but like little desk accessories and stuff. So I hope something comes in that color. So that is what it looks like as the monthly spread the the dashboard page there. And then that is what it looks like on the weekly color. September purple the monthly, and again, I'll show you the full, the weekly, October, gorgeous orange, the dashboard page, and again, the, the weekly page. And as you probably saw, the week that, whatever date the week starts, it's gonna be in that month. There's no repeat of the weeks like there is in plum paper planners. So when this week ends on the 24th, and then the next one starts just in the next monthly section. For November, we've got blue, this bright blue color. Oh, I love that one. That's really pretty. And the weekly color. And then December, you are in green. Pretty. And here is your green weekly. Then January, we're in teal. This is a teal color for January. And then for February, we've got pink. That's different, right? Yeah, for February, we've got pink. 
So definitely going with a little bit of theming. We had green for, for December, pink for, for February, orange for October, etc. Uh, so a little bit of theming there, although these are obviously all really bright and vibrant colors. That's very much the Etta V color palette. Uh, so, you know, that is what it is. Purple, my probably my favorite color, although I guess yellow and purple are both my favorite color, uh, for April, which is my birthday month. Oh, I really like this one as well on the dashboard page. Really, really pretty design. I love the dashboard. I'm the wildfire one. I've already looked at it. You'll see in a minute. It's just so gorgeous. So that is the April Monday start for the month of April. That is really special. It also puts my birthday on a Saturday. So basically April 2024, a great month. This light peachy pink for May. Another one. All of these are so gorgeous. I feel like I've just said that's so pretty so many times. Uh, the design on the dashboard and then we can take a look. This one's going to be pretty light because yeah, it is like a very light peachy color. This one you almost can't even see it's it's there it's very faint but it's just like a, a whisper of blush then we are in to june is that are we back no eventually these are going to repeat because this is an 18 month calendar but this is a different teal than the january teal uh for june it's just like a little bit more green and the other one is a little bit more blue and then you have your weekly one there and then we are back july because we started in july and this one says how beautiful change can be. And I wonder if that, no, that is different. So let me just show you the quotes on the other page. Again, September back in that purple, orange for October, just in case you want to see all of the quotes. And then blue for November and green for December. I like that one. And then a gray notes tab in the back. At the back here, you do get some lined notes pages and uh, then a little back section at the very end with some heritage and awareness observance days, a little keep in touch address book type page or information for social media or whatever you want to put. It doesn't actually specifically say anything. It's just got two little bullet points. And then you get this forward planning page, which has January to December. And again, this one is this page like that one in the front is fully neutral, uh, a fully neutral page. Then in the back here, you also get some stickers. Stickers do come in every Erin Codron planner. And here they are. These ones are rose gold and gold and silver. Oh, so you get a page of each. So we've got a rose gold page here, a rose gold page here with some habit trackers and different headers and stuff, a gold celebrate pa celebration page, and then a rose gold a uh, little late or no a silver label page and then in the back of the stickers you get your usual things so some discount cards to either use or to gift along a little saying hello from the EC family and then this really really gorgeous packet I mean come on look at that and also some compliment cards always come in your orders they're just like little mini uh, journaling cards if you will one in gold one in silver and one in rose gold and then this is the perpetual calendar. These always come with Erin Codron planners and it's just, again, a perpetual calendar. Then your back cover is just gonna have a lined notes page. So that is the full Spire vertical planner. One thing I will say, if you are going with the 18 month one, cause that obviously does give you a little bit of cost savings if you use it for the whole 18 months, I actually, uh, just sometimes we'll just take out one the folder the stickers I do actually take the folder out of even my daily duo because again I just feel like it starts to outgrow the coil uh, so I have already taken the folder and the stickers out of mine but you can also remove the notes pages and some of the other pages in the back if you don't use those just to give yourself a little bit more space. But again, if you're not using stickers in here, it's not gonna be so much of a problem, especially once you take out like all of the, the stuff that comes with the planner. But if you are using stickers and you want the 18 month planner, that's just like a little tip. So the back of the cover is also foiled matches and that is the planner. Oh, just one more look at that absolutely gorgeous coil. So as far as comparing to the softbound from last year, it's not the same colors. It's not in the same order. Overall, it's a pretty similar color family, like very much in that Etta V style. Uh, and then that was the page for from the softbound planners last year. So it is a completely new design. There, It's not a design that was previously in the shop or anything like that. Uh, there are lots of other Etta V designs that you can choose from and any Etta V cover is going to just absolutely match with this so perfectly because it is 
is such a bright and bold color palette and that hasn't changed you can see like that these obviously go really really well together so anything Etta V is gonna match and likewise any of the new Etta V accessories are gonna match with your current Etta V items all right so time for my next planner which is the daily duo I have this in the a5 size this is the size that I use this is my main functional everyday planner I have mine here which was in this one I purchased myself this was even before I was an affiliate for Erin Codron that I purchased this and I absolutely love it and I've been using it since July I would say I use it about 80% of the days so I do have some days where I skip but I use this most of the time so I had the in bloom one last year and I was pretty sure even if I didn't end up getting an affiliate box that I would pick up the wildflower one when it was released I just really, really love this. It's got the most gorgeous soft colorway and I love the little floral designs. And then even last year, the design wasn't actually on the individual daily pages. So I assumed that that was gonna be the case this, this year again, which it is. So anyway, that's just my thinking with it. I love having a little bit of color, but it's also really light and subtle and it's easy to cover on those daily pages if you ever don't want it. I also don't use a lot of stickers in here. I do use some washi and lots of color pens, but uh, not, I'm not, I don't really sticker in my daily planner. Okay, so you do get two of these. It's enough for the whole year. Another thing that I love about this, and mine is actually academic run, so I have my July to December one from late 2022, and then now I'm in my January through June one. Again, this is the same. I just have a different cover on it because I swapped the cover out, but yeah, this is the same one from the same purchase set. So you do actually get two rulers and also so if you upgrade the coil on the Daily Duo, it's that same $10 fee, but it will upgrade the coil for both planners. So last year I did do that and I got the rose gold, but this one does have silver, which is still really pretty. And again, the silver is the standard coil. So they have a few different cover options and what you can pick a cover for the planner. And when you pick a cover for the Daily Duo, the first planner will come with whatever cover you choose. Like even if it's not from one of the three designs, even if you get say the rainbow stripes on it or anything like that but the second cover will come with a standard cover that is based on your interior design so this is one of the new wildflower covers this one is foiled in gold foil and it says love this life again you can customize that and when you get the second one this is the cover that it comes with Honestly, again, because I don't love the mismatch of the foil covers, and this one is a silver foil one, I actually do kind of like this cover better. And the colors are a little bit different on this. This one is like a bluish parchment white, and this one is like a cream color. So they're both really, really pretty. And uh, honestly, like the, the dots on this and the love this life is really nice. But uh, yeah, I do actually just really like the plaid cover as well. Okay, I'm gonna pull off these rulers because that's what I do. It's very hard to navigate around them. And we will jump in. So aside from the start date being July versus January, these are actually the same. So in this colorway, in the wildflower colorway, it looks like at least in the, at least for the daily duo, though I suspect for all of them, it is six colors and they then repeat. That's also how it was last year in my daily duo. Uh, so you get July and January are the same, August and February, etc. So we only really need to look at one of these as far as the colors are concerned. So we can just start with your July. If you choose the wildflower colorway, the font is different. So the canvas and the Inspire have that same font that was in the Inspire one, but the wildflower has the script, which I do think is really Really pretty you've also got this is the this is the vellum it's a really simple one I actually think it might be the same on canvas or you might just have a plain vellum on canvas so it's just got like a very muted little asterisk little sprinkling of EC asterisks in each corner and it's in like a light gold beigey color it matches really well with the tab the 2023 tab so this one like I said because this is just covering 2023 you your tab here just says 2023 instead of saying 2023-24 which I really really do appreciate so you get the same pages you get at the beginning of the other planner but condensed because we only have six months so you have a six month little window here and a six month year and a six month year at a glance with some notes at the bottom and again I just really love that font so oh and then you actually do have a 2024 full year one printed on the back of the tab here uh, for January through December of 2024 
So then we get on to the cover and you've got this really gorgeous watercolor floral there. I believe this was painted by someone who works from Erin Condren. One of their designers actually did paint all of these floral designs. So really, really gorgeous. And July is this really nice purpley color. Fairly similar to the March color from last year, but a little bit different. And just like look at the difference between the two designs. I love this in bloom. I love in bloom. It's my planner, but this is just so gorgeous. I love this. I really, really, really love these. Again, would take as an art print. So then we have our monthly calendar. Here is our July one. Again, you have the scripty font. The font on the page is actually the same though for the calendar and, and all of that stuff. And then again, you do have full bleed design on this one uh, with just this really gorgeous little simple floral. Again, bear that in mind if you are gonna cover that up, but just also, why would you cover that up? It's so pretty. I love this. I don't really use this calendar even ever last year, even before I was in the family organizer. It's just too small for me. I'm really a very monthly planner person uh, so I just really like a lot more space than this so then you get the same notes page and you get the dashboard I love the a5 dashboard it's just a little bit scaled down it's really nice and I am obsessed with this dashboard page it is the whole background of the page is that is that print so it's got the whole wildflower print on the background and it's like a creamy color on the back on the background of the thing on the background of the page it's the, that same more parchmenty creamy a little bit of gray a little grayish if you will color there and then it's got the flowers behind it I just think that looks really really nice I absolutely love it that being said if you're trying to cover this whole page and sticker over this and match with a completely different color I don't think this is the design for you if you are using this page just that's gonna be really hard to cover up but if you are just adding a pop of color into this spread that matches definitely I, I absolutely love this so then we get into the daily duo pages so this one starts actually on Friday June 30th because the first of July is on a Saturday and the days of the week are always on the same page so Friday is always on the left hand side and Saturday is always on the right hand side and then Sunday is always on your left hand page because you get a blank notes page or line notes page after every week on Sunday. So you can use that as like reflections for the week. You can use that to create a weekly overview for the following week, to create a little weekly spread for this week, whatever you want to use that for. But there is an extra lines notes page and that also keeps the days of the week always the same. So Sunday is, so Monday is always going to go ahead and start right on the left-hand side of the page and run Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday blank. That, that is how this planner works. So we can take a look here at this this layout I have a ton of plan with me's in here if you check out my weekly planning routine videos what I do is I set up a weekly overview spread and then I plan a day in my daily duo some other stuff as well but this is like I said my main everyday planner I also film a lot of speed plan with me's in here over on Instagram and I do sometimes post them as shorts as well so up at the top it's just blank a little bit of blank space there and then the day of the week is printed is the same exact layout as last year the only difference which I actually think is a super nice touch is that this which is printed in a true black like the seven the Sunday all of the text on this is printed in a true black and this is in a little bit of a softer gray it's a really neutral gray not warm not cool like it's gonna match anything uh, and I really just like that it just really softens the look of, of all of this a bit so that is really pretty you get the same script font that unfortunately the calendar window being on every single day of the week of the week is still there I, I know a lot of people request to have that removed but they said apparently people request to keep it so if you do want it removed you can definitely fill out their annual survey they do every year they actually really the Erin Codron team like comb through that survey and collate responses to try and inform how they're going to do decisions for this year and you can fully see that that Etta V was really a fan favorite and so many people requested it and now it's a whole planner that you can get the coil planner and everything so definitely they are listening and yeah so I I'm team get that removed but it doesn't bother me a lot I honestly don't usually cover it I just kind of ignore it there's tons of space in here you get a full long daily schedule along the side it starts at 6 a.m and it ends at 7 p.m but with a blank spot at the bottom I love that because even if I don't have something right at eight if I I can put in our evening activity or whatever there so even if I had something at nine 
bedtime is at 10, so I don't really have that much to do in the evening anyways, but it just gives you a little bit of flexibility to kind of incorporate that. And they are half an hour time slots, which I also really appreciate. Then up here, again, next to that calendar, you have a little bit of blank space. I use that for like any key reminders or priorities, or I sometimes, or sometimes I put like a little kid schedule thing in there or videos or whatever. It's just like a little bit of extra space. I also put the weather in there a lot of the time. So just a little bit of extra functional space. Then you've got a to-do list. It has 13 to-dos and then a little asterisk there at the bottom. So that is what you get. And then you can always add more if you want, but I actually really like having this blank space. So little star there, which I sometimes use for a reminder. Sometimes I do just cover it or leave it alone. And then the bottom here is just kind of free space. Sometimes I do like a little quote page or some deco. Sometimes I use this for like additional split out listing. Really just depends on what kind of day I'm having. So that is the spread and you get that for every single day of the week. You do get a full page for Saturday and Sunday. So no different treating of the weekends in this planner, not anymore. I think the first time they released this, it was a Saturday Sunday split, but now it's now each weekend day has their own full page. And then you get the lined notes page all opposite the Sunday. I don't always use mine on the weekend, but sometimes I do, but I know a lot of people really like that. And that just provides the optimal planning flexibility for, for everyone. I think one thing that I've learned with daily planning and being in a daily planner full time is that it's really important to be okay with skipping a page or skipping a day. Because even though I use this, like I would say like 80% of the time and uh, most of the days that I skip are on the weekends, it's pretty rare that I skip that I skip a weekday, but I don't wanna feel guilty about leaving a blank page in my planner. So I've really tried to work hard not to feel guilty about that. Or if you have a day where your spread is just like chicken scratch on a list, or I definitely have some days where I don't write anything on the schedule and I just make a to-do list. But you know, it's just what's, it's supposed to work for you. So whatever works for you on that day and the next day is a new one. And every other day you get to turn the page and then you don't have to look at it again. So let's turn the page here at the end of the month. At the end of the month, you get an extra lined page so that this lines up with August and you have the notes page next to the cover. And then you have this cover, which is different than the other one. So each one is gonna have a different print on it. This one is absolutely gorgeous. I really like that. And they are different flowers. It's not like a recoloring of the same of the same picture and it is this mauvey color pretty similar to the february from the in bloom last year you can see there oh no wait that's the same planner pretty similar to the august color from last year i honestly think it's it's actually like almost a near a near perfect match there is the 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 dashboard and the monthly calendar with the pretty flower there and then i can just pull out one of these pages i I think I'm, oh, I don't know if I have a blank one in here. I probably do somewhere. Although this was pretty early in my planning days. I'm not sure if I was quite skipping days at that point. No, I don't have any blank pages in August, but we can take a look and you can kind of see. Yeah, so that looks like it's the exact same color from the year before, which the handy thing about that is I have markers that match this colorway. So we will test those out at the end, if in case you have the in bloom markers. All right, so then we can go on September, Mm, this is a really pretty color. It's just like a very, very pretty cream color. No color that matches that colorway from last year. Your neutral mild liners might match that really nicely. Look at the little hint of blue. I love that. I love that combination of cream and blue as well. The monthly calendar, the dashboard page, and then your very, very neutral colorway in for the month of September. Then October. I'm gonna rotate these planner pages back. We've got this very soft green color. Looks like it might match best with the uh, with the November from last year. So we can kind of take a look at that. We've got the monthly and the dashboard. And let me just zoom you in on that floral. A little bit there. Okay. So the dashboard and then our page. There is my Saturday. That also looks like it is if not the exact same color, very, very close to the November color from last year. Interesting. Then in November, we are on to this blue, which is really, which matches to the October color from the previous year. Interesting. So they've swapped the October and November colorway. So we can take a look at that. I do believe that this is again going to be, if not the same color, a pretty close match. In addition to matching with the Erin Cardron marker, this actually matches really well to one of the mild liner colors. I will show you that. So again, 
yeah, that is almost the same color, if not the same color, for November. So just a swapping of the two colors. And then for December, we have this purple, which this is a new color this year. This one does not match with any of the other colors that I have in my one from last year. So here is the print. I really like this one too. Very, very pretty. And your monthly calendar, your dashboard page and what your spread looks like. And then when you get to the back of the planner, again, it's got all the same stuff that the that the weekly planners have. So you get a heritage and awareness days. This one just has for the back half of 2023. So the ones for 2024 will be in the other planner and you've got your lined some, uh, just a teeny tiny bit of line note pages, just this whole spread. That's it. There's no other notes pages in here. Again, this is already really thick in the coil because you do have the notes pages spurst throughout and then you have your back cover. You do get some stickers here. These are in gold foil, two sheets, and then your pocket. I, when I start using this, I will take out the pocket and the stickers. I just think it gives you a little bit of extra space in the planner, and I don't usually keep anything in the pockets anyways. I will say though, though about the pockets, the Erin Codron pockets are pretty sturdy and you can actually use them to hold stickers and stuff. They, they're like a nice cardstock material, a coated cardstock, and they hold up really, really well. It if you do leave them in there. I do leave them in my year-long weekly planners. I just don't leave them in the 18-month planners or in the daily duo because of coil space. And then you have your back cover, which again, that one was slightly popped off. So again, you can just all of these covers come right off. You can stick them back on pretty easily there and you can buy more covers and change them on. Just something that's fun to do. I don't change mine a ton. I know some people change them like every month and stuff, but yeah, that is the daily duo. And you know, the quotes I think are gonna be a little bit different so we can just flip through, but they are gonna match with, with the pages that we saw in the previous one. So just in case you are curious, uh, the Erin Codron paper also smells really good. I don't know if anyone else thinks that. I just, I don't know. I, it's something about, and it's really hot under the lights and it's pretty hot in my office right now. So I just feel like, yeah, the smell is really like, I'm cooking the planner a little bit and, and it smells absolutely lovely. Your daily duo planners will also come with the perpetual calendar, the same coupons and compliment cards and all of that. It will just be tucked into one of the planners, not into both of them. Right now that we're through the planners, let's get into the accessories. All of the accessories I have, or almost all of them, are from the Inspire line. Almost all of these items, or if not all of them, are also available in the Wildflower Designs. I will probably be picking up a few of those for myself on launch day. And then there is a limited number of canvas accessories that are also available, but not quite as many as there are for the Inspire or Wildflower line. And I think that's just because the canvas line is really a blank canvas, if you will. So let's go through what I have here. I'm gonna try and leave prices on the screen in case I forget to say them, but if I missed any and you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. Questions about anything, if there's something else you wanna see, leave it in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. I am happy to go over all of this with you. You can also check out my Instagram for more. There's gonna be tons more coverage of this launch because I am super excited. So let's start with the new and improved planner folio. So this is replacing those neoprene folios. I have a bunch of the neoprene ones. I really love these. And this is such an upgrade. It's a different material. It still feels really nice. Like that it would like you could wipe it clean and all of that kind of stuff in case you did spill something on it it's going to keep your planner protected but it's super sturdy it's definitely like suitcase ready i would describe it as which is great because actually that is the place that i end up using these the most is if we are traveling and i'm traveling with my planner i will always pack it up in one of these these are available in a few different designs and in the seven by nine and a five sizes the seven by nine is 3250 and the a five size is 2750 it's got like this reinforced spine and in the spine is in the blue color and then this one is in the in the inspire colorway and I do know that they have a wildflower wildflower one as well it zips all the way around and zips closed and then it's like I don't know it kind of reminds me of a trapper keeper from back in the day uh, it doesn't have the binder inside of it but you know I'm getting uh, I'm channeling my previous Lisa Frank vibe okay, on the inside here we have this little folio space so we have a pocket here and then this you can stick the back page of your planner in there you don't have to but you can slide that in if you want to keep this as more of like a planner folio rather than a travel thing so if you were always going to keep your planner in here then you can I would slide the 
the, the back cover in there, but if you're not always going to keep it in just for travel, you could just pack it up right on top. You've got a pocket here where you could slip something. Then on this side, we've got a secretarial pocket, two little sl card slot pockets, and a mesh one, and then some pen holders. The back pocket here is that same firm material and then this one is soft as well as the secretarial so this does fit the 18 months planner i will say that not a lot else is going to fit in here with the 18 month planner i was able to get this closed with a pen and the 18th month planner and like one piece of paper but i could not fit a separate notebook into one of the pockets when i had the 18 month in here that being said a year-long planner you're going to be able to fit a lot more again it's just the thickness of the 18 month planner the 18 month planner is a little bit of a beast so that is the new and improved folio i really really like this i will definitely be using this uh like i said it does come in the a5 size but I've previously with the neoprene ones still packed my A5 planner inside inside um, the seven by nine ones before and, and use that just fine. If I was maybe like putting it in a checked bag, I might want the the seven the A5 size so it doesn't slide around so much, but it does fit in there. And you can also kind of see like the, you have just a little bit more squish room in there. I'm actually gonna put a calendar year planner in there so that you can kind of see the difference in like the extra room you have. You can kind of see the way that that squishes down versus versus the seven uh, versus the 18 month planner, which that just has very little squish to it. Next up, we have a monthly petite planner. This is an 18 month monthly planner. So just monthly spreads, A5 size, goes in the petite folio system and it matches. So all of the same uh, cover, just A5 size with the planners and it's bound. So you get the little spread there and this runs from July through the end of December. So just really, really cute. I'm not a petite planner person, but I do have a couple of them that are like super specialty, like the holiday planning ones and stuff that I like, but yeah. So this just gives you 18 months and then you get some extra notes pages in the back and the notes pages, the asterisk goes in the same color order as the, as the, as the monthly pages. Then tucked into the back of all the petite planners are stickers because it's Erin Codron and these stickers are super, super cute. And that is $14.50, which I believe is the price, the normal price for a petite planner. And this one is foiled with rose gold and it has the purple version of the art for the cover. Then I have two sets of pouches here. One is the classic, the ultimate planny pack. This one is, the planny pack is 2050, and I think that this is available in all three designs. Uh, no, I actually think it's just the wildflower and the, the Etta V. I don't think that this one comes in canvas. So you get this, which has the backing, which don't sleep on the backing of these. It's so beautiful. I actually have a sticky note dashboard that I made on the back of a watercolor stripes uh, planning pack. So I definitely will be saving this to use, but basically it's just a small pencil pouch that can clip onto the front of your planner. Uh, this one, again, the Inspire all has rose gold accents. So all rose gold and it just unzips like that. And you could stick your washies in here or anything you want. And then the, the fun thing about these is that they have just this basically headband material Oof, that is a tight again a tight fit on the 18 month it definitely fits better on the calendar year one that is actually like really pulling so yeah um but it just can you can just if you're traveling with your planner if you're taking your planner out in the wild you can just pack that up with some of your pens and markers and accessories and it's going to match perfectly this one is so pretty i just really love that everything about this design is just absolutely gorgeous so that is the planning pack and then also these canvas tote, these canvas accordion pouches. So I think the canvas version of these is fairly new. They ha they make other ones as well that are the more neoprene material or the more material that I associate with with toiletry bags, so that it's like a little bit more waterproof. But these are the canvas ones. This has gold so, uh, gold hardware. I really love these. It's great for like keeping a bunch of different things that are semi related together. So like if I were pack packing this up for planners, I could put all my washi in one, my pens in one, and some other accessories in the other. You can actually get these customized as well. Mine is not customized, but you can get like your name or whatever you want printed on it. And it's just got a little swatch of that design like screen printed on it. Really, really pretty. I have a couple of these canvas ones now and have a bunch of the other ones. All right, I also have some 
Inspire themed stickers. All of this stuff does say Etta V X Erin Codron on it, so you know that it's from the collab. So we will open this up. This is the designer sticker book. It actually has uh, all the pictures of the stickers on the back, but we will, of course, uh, open this up as well. This is $16.50, I think, same as the other sticker bo books. So again, same cover there. And then you get a bunch of different pages. Some of these look really pretty. I was just looking at the pictures on the back. I'm gonna quickly flip through these. Ooh, okay. So I'm gonna start with the last page uh, just to mix things up and then we'll go backwards. So all of these I believe are printed on white paper and they are foiled. So that first one there has silver foil. You get a mix of different foils, which I always appreciate. We've got some gold foil here, a mix of functional and decorative. That one's in rose gold, uh, silver, some gold words ones, so that's fun. Love that. All those weekend stickers. Lots of weekends. Uh, then we have these circles with rose gold, silver, gold, oh, so pretty. Rose gold, silver, these with gold. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. I'm definitely doing some spreads with that. And then this with rose gold. So that is the sticker pack there. I also have these stickers. This is the seven by nine Inspire pack of stickers. These are 850. They also come in a five size and the A5 ones are 450 and you get four sheets of stickers in here. So this page, which is foiled in rose gold. Actually, I think all of these are in rose gold. And this one here with the habit trackers, really pretty. Oh, this one is in gold with the birthday sticker. So this is actually, and then in silver. So this is a set of the stickers that came in the planner if you want an extra set or if you bought a different colorway. Like, so if you love this colorway, but you're more of a neutral planner person, if you wanna get the canvas planner and then you can get the Inspire stickers to go with it. So just different ways to customize and mix things up. So those are the stickers I have. Sticker adjacent though, we've got some washi tapes. These are so, so pretty. So We've got a rose gold solid, a purple solid, this green gr and blue grid, and then two that match the colorway. So obviously we're gonna have to open these and swatch them. I will do that when I am pen testing. I'm gonna finish going through all of the accessories and then I'm gonna do a pen test and I will test the pens that I received in this and we will also swatch these washies with that as well. So stay tuned. So actually speaking of pens, here is the first one here that I have, which this is a Etta V pen. Really, really gorgeous. It looks like kind of like the Simply Gilded pens if you have ever seen uh, me look at those or take pictures with those. It looks pretty similar. It definitely has like a little bit of a texture to it, uh, like feels printed, if that makes sense, but matches the, matches the planner, matches the design, and then it's just a a kind of plain pen. It looks like probably just like a ballpoint pen. I don't write with these a lot, but they're really great for taking a aesthetic photos and yeah, it just matches the planner and it's really, really nice looking. And then the other markers that I have, which I'm so excited to try these out is the Writing Tools Variety Pack. So these come with a dual tip bullet marker. So it's got a fine tip and a bullet tip and then a highlighter. I have these already in the In Bloom colorway. Oh no, I have these already, I think in either the, yeah, I have them in the In Bloom colorway, so now I also have them in the Inspire colorway. I may pick them up in the Wildflower one, although I feel like there's gonna be a little overlap, so I'm gonna check my marker collection before I commit to buying anything new. So we will, of course, swatch all of these at the end, and we'll also take a look at how well they match with the colors in the planner, because what I learned last time is that some of them match perfectly, and some of them are a little bit so-so. So we'll take a look at that and see, and then I also have some snacks snap in accessories. One, your magnetic to-do list. These are 750. This is not a new product. It's something that you see has made for a while, but it just, you know, comes in the new design, of course. And this is meant to be a page marker that you can magnet down. I have found it's very he heavy to put a single page in between this. Like, I don't want it to tear up my paper, but basically it just goes like that and kind of snaps shut. You can put a couple pages between it for like a little bit of extra safety. I don't typically use these, but they are really cute and you can write on them with your wet and dry erase markers. At least I think you can. Then we have our snap in folios and our bookmarks. Again, same products as they've had before, but just updated with the new design. So here is the one that is like the priorities ones. You have a little line section, a to-do listing section, and then a weekly overview on the back there. I always think this is so cute, especially if you use a daily duo, if you had a seven by nine daily duo, because this is in a seven 
seven by nine size to clip this in to use as a weekly overview and then you have your daily pages super super fun we also have our snap in bookmarks again just matching the design in three different versions of the colorway and these you just clip directly onto the coil to mark your page so just kind of like like so. And then it just peeks up at the top so that you can see what page you're on. So then the last thing I have, I think these are new uh, and these are not in a specific colorway. They're kind of in every colorway. I can't find the, the price on these so I'll put it across the screen but these are a snap in pocket dashboards. Really cool idea. Set of three. They are clear. Uh, so oh my goodness. So it's Oh, I love this. Okay, so this is, you could make your own decorative dashboards to stick in. I mean, of course, you could stick practical stuff in here as well, like your hold your stickers, hold papers, hold sticky notes, whatever. But you could also print a, like a printed page of your own design of whatever you want. And then you have like this little pocket folder to stick in. So it kind of reminds me of like a TN setup, like when if you had those clear plastic covers or a ring setup, putting in a dashboard, like a decorative dashboard to mark off a section of your planner. So that's super fun. Definitely speaks to my love of a decorative planner setup. Uh, and then again, it just kind of clips right in. All right, so I just had to pop the camera off to get that in. It was very hard to get that to clip in, but once it's in, it's okay. Because it's so much thicker than the usual dashboards, which are just, you know, plain lap. This is this is much thicker since it is a double-sided pocket. Uh, I did have a little bit of a struggle to get that in. It took a couple of minutes and then once it's in, it's fine. I did end up bending some of the little ones, but again, it feels very secure in there. I would not be worried about that coming out. And it's got like a little tabby thing up at the top. Super cute. So that way you could top tab your planner. It is too coil rungs shorter than the coil. So it's two rungs shorter than the coil. So you could set this up so that it's on the top of the coil and then this will stick out a little bit more or you could move it down one or even two and then it would stick out a little bit less. Just personal preference. I went with the centered option because that is what I did and that is how that looks in there. I really love that. I think that's a very cool new product. Uh, I think people might really like these that you could stick your stickers right behind your week or again, like I said, you could create like a very decorative page. You could even do both. You could have a decorative page on the cover and then put your stickers in the bottom. You could stick another pocket if you have those adhesive pockets and stick that on the front. So that's definitely a fun one to play around with. We will definitely have to do that. Pulled out really nicely. Just didn't, uh, just took a minute to clip it. Okay. So I believe that is all the accessories I have. I will take one last hunt around my desk because it is a little chaotic looking right now. So I'm going to get all set up to do one, a pen test in the splinter, just in case you've never seen it. Two, we will we will swatch all of the pens and markers that I got and we will also swatch the washies. We are all ready to pen test now. I've got a bunch of pens here. I'm gonna pen test in the vertical. The paper is the same in both planners and I'm gonna test this just a variety of pens that I typically use. I have an Erin Codron stamping marker, a dot marker, some Tombow dual brush pens, some Fudineske brush pens, Zebra Mild liner, and just some regular writing pens, a gel pen, a paper mate flare, and a zebra click art so all different pens there this paper is super nice as I said before and it is the same paper as it's always been then for the actual new markers that I got I'm actually going to swatch them on this little notepad I found that really useful the last time I did this color match thing that way we can pull off the sheet and put it right next to the colors to see how close of a match everything is I'm just gonna turn to the last piece of notes page here and do a pen test page All right, so everything writes on this super, super well. When you press the dot marker down super, super hard, there is a bit of shadowing. And likewise, actually with the click art pen, uh, where I wrote super big, there's a teensy bit of shadowing well. But other than that, everything writes on this really nicely. Again, this is just really nice paper. It's some of my favorite planner paper. So anything that you regularly use in your planners, this paper is going to hold up really well too. And I also just really like the way that this paper feels when it writes. That's just why I kind of like this paper. It has just a definite texture to it that I just find very pleasant to write on. If you like a smoother paper though, this is not a smooth paper. It's, it's very textured and toothy. I do feel like I can definitely tell when I'm touching this paper versus another planner's paper. Like 
with my eyes closed. All right, I'm just also gonna swatch the washies so that you can take a look at them. I'm just gonna do it on this page here. Oh, that's really pretty. I love that grid washi. I feel like grid washies are kind of having a moment with all the layering potential. So you could put the washi down, you could layer another piece of washi on top of it, uh, or use stickers on top of the washi, and it's just like a little minimal pattern in the background. I, I've been really into that lately. I think that just creates a really, really nice look. Oh, these are really pretty too. You know what? It's been so long since I've had an Erin Codron washi. These are so cute. I feel like this is two washies, but maybe I'm... I don't think this is two washies. I thought it was two washies, but it's actually just one roll of washi that is half purple, half rose gold. Interesting. So it's just like a really thick rose gold line. Bright, bright, vibrant purple washi. This is actually really, would be really good for writing on. And actually, I wonder if you can even write on it with the ballpoint pen. I don't think this is the right pen to use. It doesn't look like it's uh, standing on it, but I have a favorite permanent marker that has a really fine tip that you could write on with that. And then I also have this, which is the Pilot Multi Ball. This you really have to let dry, uh, but once it once it does dry, that is this is this that is smudging from that. But this is not going to smudge, and that in a minute when that's dry, it won't much and also I feel like you probably can't even see that can you I'll get you closer so you could use that to make like headers and stuff for your planner and then that one's probably dry now yeah so that pen just takes a little bit longer to dry but once it's dried it's set and you can write on transparent stuff shiny stickers anything uh pretty much anything it's essentially a permanent marker but a pen so there are the washies. You have the two in the pattern. Absolutely gorgeous. And that really fun grid one as well. I would definitely be using these. These are super, super fun. I'm excited to have those. So now let's go ahead and swatch these and then we will go and line them up to their proper colors and see how they look. So you don't actually have one for each month because there are 12 colors, but you have six here. So six select colors. And the way this works is these one, these on the right hand side are the highlighters, the ones with the clip, the, the lid that looks like this and are a single point pen. Those are the highlighters and they have a chisel tip it look the tip like looks pretty much like any other highlighter tip it is a pretty firm highlighter tip not squishy like the way the mild liners are and then on these pens this is the dual end side and you have a thick bullet tip on one side which I believe is a I don't know what what tip that is but it's very thick and then you have this really thin one there as well so we can actually just start with that and these do have names. This is, oh, that's gorgeous. This is Sapphire. All right, so there they are. Uh, the Seafoam, Orchid, and Cherry are all pretty light in color. Uh, the sapphire one is absolutely gorgeous. That's by far my favorite color. Not really that practical for highlighting, but for using in spreads and using as like a stenciling tool, etc. that's going to look really great. So that is where they're at. I was just thinking, so these markers, they make these to match a lot of their colorways. I have them for in bloom, as I said before, but I, I but I don't have them in harmony colorful or in, or in color blends from last year, which is much more similar colorway to this. So I can't compare how they match to those but you can kind of look at the colors and hopefully see I do think that overall this bright vibrant colorway is very in line with things that Erin Codron has done in the past so some of those markers that you already have may already match with this pretty well Okay, so as far as matching super well with the colorway in the planner, let's take a look. So this sapphire color is clearly looks like it's meant to be, I think, probably for July or at least pretty similar. And you can kind of see what it looks like. It's a nice bright blue. Honestly, 
it's pretty dark compared to what's actually in the planner. Like it's not going to line up with the header, but it does match decently well with like the writing on July. Although I would say this is much more bright and vibrant, more similar to, let's see, like kind of like this part of the of the page. So the I feel like in the print, it's a little bit more denim, and in here, it's just a little bit more vibrant, like sapphire is the perfect name for that marker, but I wouldn't call it a horrible match or anything, but it's definitely not an exact color match. So then cornflower, that looks like it's probably supposed to be for November here. And this one is a really solid match for the for the color that's right in the header. Uh, it looks like it's probably the same color as the as the top line here. So definitely a really good match for cornflower. Then the seafoam one that looks like it's supposed to be for March. We have just a really nice tealish green. I think that the green in the marker is maybe a little, oh no, that's actually really close. Okay, I was gonna say, it's maybe like a teeny bit more green than this one is, but it's very, very close. And I actually have this other Erin Codron marker in green just to see the difference. Uh, that one is like a little bit brighter. That was not from a set. I got this in the pen advent calendar which I love the pen advent calendar, by the way. Okay, so then purple here, April. We have this orchid color, and this one also looks like a pretty good March, although this one I actually think matches better with maybe the middle color than the top color, but again, that is a pretty close match there. Where are my in bloom markers from before? I just wanted to say, no, that one is definitely not the same color, and then yeah, so definitely not, just none of these look like, oh, then I had one more that was maybe a potential match. So that one is the closest. Uh, so definitely these purples and blues do not match with anything that I have from the In Bloom set. This cherry one matches very, very closely with the one that I have in the In Bloom set. I don't remember what this was called in the In Bloom set. Uh, I also, I pretty sure that one's called cherry because the other option was hot pink, but I did get them out of order. So apologies if I have those two transposed, but I don't think that looks like a cherry or a hot pink. Honestly, it's a very peachy color, <laughs> but, but anyway, that one does match with the in bloom marker that I already have, but that's the only duplicate in the set, I would say. Okay. So let's look. Cherry should be for May, and that looks like it's going to be a really, really excellent, excellent match. Yeah, matches pretty much perfectly there. Again, I think the middle color here is probably the closest. And then hot pink for February. And this one is not remotely the same. It's not even tonally correct. Like, this is a very true... This is like a very vibrant blush pink, and then this one is a pretty neon pink. I feel like it's closer to this color on the inside of the design here, but it's definitely not that. It's not It's not tonally a match. It's not close to the one. This is probably the worst match of all of them. Yeah, it looks like this color in the design. So it matches with a color in this planner, but not one of the main colors on the page. And this, this design probably also has that, no. yeah, like over here in this part of the design. But yeah, other than that hot pink one, the rest of them are pretty decent matches to some of the colors in the planner, but you don't have the green or the orange or that purple color from September. Although I do wonder, this color? Oh no, wait, the purple for September, we did match, sorry. We don't have the yellow for August or the green for December or the orange for October. All in all, I do really like these highlighters. I think they're a lot of fun. I liked the In Bloom set I have, and I do use them pretty frequently. In terms of the tip feel on the highlighter, I like the mild liner a little bit better. I just like the squishy feel of the highlighter, but I love that this has a matching pen that has two additional nibs, and the firm nib on this is really nice for writing with a bold tip, and it's much less squishy than the other end of the zebra mild liner and that I do really like so I to me it's 
the the highlighter on on its own I'd prefer the mild liners but the combination is really fun and it gives you some more tip options and you know though you have a super fine one that's just perfect for writing or for doing like little check boxes on the stencil and then you have this bolder tip one that is really easy to write with as well and also gives you a really clean line when you're stenciling with it and then you have a matching highlighter so in the interest of the complete set I, I do think that these are are pretty worthwhile pens from Erin Codron. And for the most part, they do match your planners. And just also this sapphire color is just everything. I absolutely love that. So the last thing I'm gonna do is actually down here on the bottom of this off camera, I'm gonna really quickly try and see if I can get a mild liner match for any of these colors throughout the planner. Uh, I do have every single mild liner, so I figured why not? I know a lot of other people do as well, and then I will be right back. All right, so I have my attempt at some mild liner matches here. There were a couple that I actually could not match very well, and I have some close best and one where I found a perfect match with a Tombow, but I didn't, but there's not a mild liner cover. So starting off for June, the bright teal matches very well with the top one here. It's maybe like a little bit more bright, but it matches pretty well. And actually the light one honestly matches pretty well with the lighter color as well. So you have lots of options for June. For May this one was really hard to match and I don't think anything is a better match than the Erin Codron marker that that came in the pack which was also in my in bloom pack as well this pretty much the same color for the mild liners I honestly think the dusty pink is closest but it's not that great of a match and also if there's one mild liner that somebody doesn't have it's probably going to be this dusty pink because this is the one that you have to uh special order from either jet pens or stationary pal because it's only available in the japanese sets not in the u.s sets that was may so then for april the the tab color matches with the bold purple from the mild liner but the actual lines on the paper i think match better with this purple mild liner a lot of my matches were from the mild liner gentle set i will say not all of them but i did have a couple pulled in from the mild liner gentle set which is one of the new sets as well so i actually have this one as the best match for september and april but it does match much closer in april than it does in september and honestly the orchid here does also look like it would kind of match with April and with September and with April but it is also a better match with April I think. So then here for March this is the one where I literally could not find any mild liner that was remotely close so this seafoam one that comes in the Erin Condren pack is definitely the closest match. Then for February the classic red mild liner is pretty much a perfect match there. Very, very good match. And that was the one where there was not a match in the Erin Codron pack. So that is very convenient. Then January, we are in this teal color and this matches with this uh, classic teal mild liner very well, this one here. So then this green one, not a mild liner pack, but actually the Moxie marker that's green, it looks neon here, but this is actually what it looks like in uh, when you write with it. It's it's a more a much more muted tone. It's a really unique marker actually. Um, and anyway, the green here for December matches pretty much perfectly with that. So that was a nice surprise. I just thought that as I was looking at it, I was like, actually, you know what? I think I have a marker that matches with it. For November, this again from one of the older mild liner packs, this kind of like classic cornflower blue. The cornflower blue also matches really well with this. For October, also from the gentle set, we have this one here is a really, really good match for that as well. And this one, and that's this one. That is this one here. And this is again from the gentle set. Then we are back September. Again, I didn't think either of the purple mild liners were like a great match for it. Uh, the one from the gentle pack or the other one. And I, I feel like it's right in between that color. And like, likewise, I don't think that this is a great match for it either. Tonally, I think this matches better with the April color, but it's not super far off for, for any of them. Then for yellow, so I could not find a mild liner that matched with this, but this Tombow 991, this Tombow 991 is honestly almost like an exact match. That is that right there. And then July for the bolder color, nothing is 
is matches as well as the sapphire but for the kind of lighter end of the spectrum you're going to be just fine with that same mild liner that matched for november all right so i have my swatch book out on my desk where i have my erin cardron in bloom markers swatch so you can kind of take a look at that next to the new ones which i will add into this book but as you can see really only the cherry matches with the previous jan july color the rest of them are all new at least compared to the in bloom set but i don't have the harmony colorful set to compare with which may match better with these markers in terms of matching with the colors in the planner here we have our january slash july color here which is this which is this pinky purple color and that i guess kind of a little bit matches with march so this is the exact same color as was in the in bloom last year but it was march and september last year and this was one where i didn't feel like the in bloom marker matched all of that well but none of the new markers that i have match with that either and then for february that is the same color as from february from february this year so same color same spot that was the february and august color pen and again i didn't feel like that one was a super great mar match either i will talk about some markers that are potentially better match options in just a second uh, so then March is this cream color and that and that is a completely new color and none of those are gonna match with that as well for April we've got this pale green color that is the same as the May November so this is from May so I haven't used this part of the planner yet because we're not in May yet uh, it's not 100% the same color, but it is pretty similar. This is just a little bit lighter than the color from last year. So this is the marker that is supposed to match with that. I don't, again, think that it's really that great of a match. I'm trying to, let me zoom you in a little bit more. Uh, okay, so then for May, we've got this blue. This is the same blue that was previously in April, May, and so just swapped into April. Again, I think it's just like a little bit more muted than it was last year, but the April, October marker will match with that, and that is a pretty decent match. That's also this blue, this particular shade of blue is very easy blue to match. I have a ton of markers in like that color family. The cornflower match pretty well that mild liner is going to match to it pretty well as well so that color in general is seems like a pretty easy color to match so then for june we've got purple and this is definitely different than the previous purple so again nothing here is going to match exact exactly so honestly the in bloom markers from last year despite the color having a very similar feel are not a great match for your new wildflower planner the colors that are the same as last year are largely ones that it wasn't a great match to begin with however i don't think i'm going to be picking up the wildflower markers I will take a look at them on the website, but I don't think I'm going to be picking them up because I do have a lot of really creamy neutral highlighters that do match in here, and that's actually what's on the other side of this page. So I have some of the Aloster ones, which are the really square looking ones, and some Zaire cream highlighters, and I think that both of these sets, there's another set of these as well, which I don't have, but the Zaires, which come in a pack of 12 and are like $8 for the whole pack, and they're a pretty nice highlighter. They look like this, and they are a dual tip, so you have a chisel tip on one end and then a bullet tip on the other and they have a lot of colors in this that are going to match pretty nicely with your wildflower planner a pretty great price point so we've got like the purple that's going to match pretty nicely with that june color there we have this cream color is actually the best match of any marker that i have for the for the March color, so that that's that cream one from the Zaire set. Uh, the April color, again, this April color has been the hardest to match. I actually think that the, believe it or not, that the best match for the April color in general is actually just the plain gray mild liner, which has just a tint of green in it. It's obviously not exact, but of all the markers I have, I actually think that the zebra mild liner, the plain gray from the original cool set is the, is the best match. But, this, I guess this would be closest in this set. And tonally speaking, the Aloster one is kind of similar, but it's obviously a lot darker. Uh, so, you know, still working on April there. May, again, I have in pretty much every highlighter set, I've got a color that matches with that. Just like I said, the blue is, is just a really easy blue to match. And then June, which is, no, we did June the purple. It's the pinks. So February, that matches with this one from the Zaire set pretty well, or hmm, 
maybe even that one, and then January. Yeah, I would say the January matches with this one in the middle, and then February matches with this one. The Zayer highlighter's the only other thing to know about them, and these are linked in my Amazon store if you wanna check them out. The only other thing to know about them is that some of the barrel colors are a really bad match for the color that comes out, so definitely swatch them or check them out before you start using them. There's just definitely a little bit of a mismatch on some of them between the barrel colors and the, and the ink colors, but that being said, it is a really pretty, uh, a pretty set of highlighters and it's also really cheap. Like, and that is it for this very, very epic unboxing. Again, thank you so much to Erin Codron for sending me these planners, for sending me all the accessories to take a look at. This was so much fun and I loved getting to see everything in the box. I cannot wait to start using my new daily duo. Just one last look at that gorgeous coil. I'm so obsessed with that. It's so, so cute. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new, I hope you stick around and subscribe. You can also check me out on Instagram and TikTok if you're planning to shop the launch. One, let me know down in the comments what you plan on picking up. I can't wait to see what everyone is getting. And two, if you would like to use my affiliate link, I will leave that right down in the description below. And again, thank you so much for using my link. It helps support this channel and also enables me to get early access to some of these products to check out for you. So I will talk to you all next time. Happy planning and happy shopping. Bye.